Here she is. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. All things considered. How are you doing? Good, good. It's always a little awkward in the beginning with these things, getting people to sign up. No, absolutely. Absolutely. We're here. How are you feeling? Really good. Really good. And the girls? Everyone's good? What's that? What's that? Everyone's good? Everyone's good. Okay, awesome. So I was just, uh, good, good. Yeah, so I was just looking at your bio. So you went to college in the um, College of Creative Studies in Detroit, yeah? I did, for undergrad. Undergrad. And then when did you, I know you started off as a sculptor, which is really interesting to me. I did. I did. So I, uh, you know, in, in undergrad, I did all of it. I, I, I'm more, I love, I'm a lover of materials and processes. I love, I just love getting my hands dirty. I've been like that since I was a kid. And um, in undergrad, it really hit me that I wanted to really use serious materials. And so I got into metal and l huge amounts of wood and, and installations with those, with those materials. And um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it, but I was also painting, I was doing a lot of painting and drawing. Mm -hmm. Drawing was probably the most consistent uh, practice I've had throughout. And, and then uh, in grad school, I, I, I went into installation work. And so in grad school, I continued into installation work with everything got larger. But, but my language kind of really began to come out then. And the language of Marx and everybody seemed to always say, why does everything seem like it's going fast? You know, why does everything seem like it's falling apart or coming together? And that, and that was present in my drawings and also my sculpture installations. So, and then in grad school, I started getting into digital media. And that really cool. also helped. Awesome. So what is, tell me like just basic briefly, like, so what does this time mean for you in this age of quarantine? Like as far as inspiration goes, as far as, where are you finding inspiration or what you're, is there anything that you're working on that you didn't have time to before that you like are jumping into now or, or um, general, generally speaking, what, as an artist, well, what are you what's finding? Me now is I'm, um, I'm noticing that I'm becoming interested in things that I wasn't too interested in before. For example, mm. I, I've always loved bright color, but I've, I've never had much interest in actually using it. <laughs> in my paintings as, a, as the total coverage of the painting. I, I like using little bits of red or little bits of other, you know, of other poppy color, but never the whole painting. And I feel like I'm, all, I, I'm just so drawn to it right now. Like these, these pieces behind me are what I've mainly, other than the, I've had a couple of commissions I've been working on. Um, but these pieces are what I've been working on that are really awesome. a result of this COVID thing. And it's just brilliant, bright, happy, you know, in a way disruptive to what we're going, what we're going through right now. And um, it's, my studio practice is taking on a voice of its own in a different way now. And that intensity that I had that was underlying is now kind of, uh, in a way pushed underneath. Like, um, yeah, in, let's this see. One, in this one, you can kind of see some of the darker marks, but they've been covered over by white. And then I've, brought some yellow on top of it. So it's all there as a history, but it's, um, I guess. So do you start off, you start off with graphite, with these, these new abstracts you're doing. What's the, what's your process? I start off with raw linen. And then my, uh -huh. the first thing I do is I, um, I put gesso on the linen, but I don't do it in a way where I'm, okay, I need to cover all the linen. It, I do it in a way where I'm drawing with the gesso and I use, um, I use a large kind of squeegee to do it. And so I make these big drawings with the white. And hi, Lauren, Lauren Eiferman jumped on. Oh, she wants hi. to know what's the shiny surface. The shiny surface. Um, like, let me see. Here, this is, it's a little bit, sorry to make you guys get dizzy. Do you see the shininess <laughs> here? Yes, yes. Okay. It's, um, it's where I add a gloss medium to the paint. Because oh, okay. sometimes you want a certain colors to pop more than others. And like, for example, this is rather matte. Let me see if my finger, this is rather matte. But this shine, especially with this brilliant red, it really mm. helps it pop. That's beautiful. And That's amazing. In, in a way, even though it's abstraction, it's still, uh, there are some rules of uh, 
historical painting and traditional painting that apply where that shine will bring it forward for the eye. So that's why I use it. But yeah, it's just a gloss medium that I mix to the paint. Can we get a long shot of the of the first one that you showed? Like the, um, the, the, the first one. That one. Yeah. Yeah, that's really amazing. Thank you. So what do you, you, do you start off drawing or is it freehand? I forgot we, to rewind. I, I think I interrupted you for a second. It's freehand. So it, it's freehand? Do you just, you just go for it? I just go for it. Um, if you imagine me, if you imagine this in the inverse, you see the, you see the almost blackish blue. Yes. I, in a way, I approach the, the linen with those types of marks, but with white. I see. So I, I really, I actually love gesso as a material. Uh -huh. I love how thick and chalky it is. And so for me, I find that stage of the process as inspiring as, um, as the paint. So, um, so I put that on and you can kind of see where I really, where I really push it into the surface, where, like in a really granular, granular way. Yes, I think that I think the shiny surface is what Lauren was asking about. Is that the medium that you mix in? Yep. It, okay, got it. Yeah, these awesome. are acrylics, so it, it's the acrylic. acrylic medium. So you mix the acrylic with the other. What's the name of it? I'm sorry. Did you say the it's, name of? It's a gloss medium. It's. Um, okay. <laughs> got it. This got is it. fun okay. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's got the consistency of honey. And so you can just kind of pour it and mix it with things. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then does it take longer to dry or does it, what's the drying process? Like? That, that one does, which, That's which nice. can be good for me. I like, um, I like my paintings to dry faster. So when I apply that medium, I'm really mindful of it. That one in particular, because uh -huh. in order for me to do layers in a certain way, I need it to dry fast. I see. So it's just so it's gesso in certain parts first, mm -hmm. and then and then it's you just you go do you, those smaller that smaller piece of paper that you showed is that a study? Do you just do a study with the with yes, the colors? These are, these, are or my, these are my thumbnails. These, like these in particular, like this one was for a commission, and um, so I did a whole bunch of these and okay. uh, went over them with with my client to see which feeling she was going she wanted to go for because some of them are definitely moody some of them are more lighthearted, and it wasn't I mean of course I use this directionally but it's not going to be a you know sort of carbon copy in you know once I blow it up to a painting because there's the whole painting process and allowing me to kind of to kind of uh do what might follow what my creative uh well, my, where my creativity leads me because I don't always know, to tell you the truth. Uh -huh. If I'm having a really yeah. good studio day, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> so <laughs> that, is, that, or is, that on, is that on linen or is that on paper? What is that on? This, this is rag paper. Paper, okay. So it's kind of like a printmaking paper. It's really thick. Okay. So these are all studies and these were studies for, for um, this large piece. Oh, nice. So. That's awesome. So you found yourself being drawn to hotter colors during the quarantine. Yes? Absolutely. Is that what you Absolutely. It's like happy, happy by little COVID rebellion colors. <laughs> let me see. Let me turn. Can you, let me see. Yeah. Like this manganese, really? this, this color is called manganese. Uh -huh. I, mean, I never, in fact, yeah, I don't even know when I've used this before, before this year, this past month or so. But That's awesome. I love this color. And um, just these really pure, bright, spring-like I got to say, I, I got to say, it always makes me, like, nervous. Even even though I know it's your artwork, and, and whenever I see anyone touching a painting, I, like, I, <laughs> it's like, like, don't touch the art. <laughs> I'm like, is it dry? Are you sure yeah. it's dry? How do you know it's dry? No, that's great. That's beautiful. I'm a really tactile person, and that, that's, that's what drives me. <laughs> Is I, I love the feeling of the of the wet paint, and I love what mm. it, I love how it slides on the surface, and I love how it interacts with other globs of wet paint when you know when applicable or or um or on top of the dry like these little things these 
I don't know if you can see that white on white. Yes, yes. Those little things make me really happy. <laughs> We're just kind of drags. This is my art nerdiness. <laughs> so is it like a happy accident that makes you happy? Or does it, why does it make you happy? I like seeing the materials um, do unexpected. I mean, unexpected is a very loose term because I know I know that if I don't add medium to the paint, it's not, it's going to be dry, but I can't control exactly every single point where mm -hmm. it hits because I'm using mm -hmm. these, I'm using these large squeegees and um, these squeegee type instruments and it's oh, okay. not as precise as a paintbrush. And that's one of the things I absolutely love because I've been so many years that I use paintbrushes and um, to yes. me, I love the, how these colors can um hey vino gal <laughs> she's on and i see the sure. reading room too yes Yay, so um, so you um when did you start painting with squeegees is it for this body of work that you started using squeegees and gave up the brush or was it before it was a little it was a little over a year ago oh, okay and I just started using, I started using any, anything I could find in my toolbox, really. Um, I've done a lot of, a lot of renovations, a lot of home renovations and mudded my walls and <laughs> that kind of thing. And all my sculpture background. And so I just started um, applying the paint to, to the canvas and the linen with anything that had a wide edge. I see. And, um, and just playing with how sharp the marks can be or how broad the marks can be and how long I could get them to draw out for and what they do on top of one another. Um, like what, let me see, hey, there, let me see. Oh, I say yes. Oh, I say, yeah, yeah, the edges. Uh -huh. Yes, cool. so this is, is just, it's colors on top of one another. In a, in a way, it's applying some principles of printmaking. I, used, I did printing in, um, in undergrad and grad school. Is this one a commission or is this one a, is this one? No, these are just one. Are I'm just really one. loving their, that new color palette. Your Corona it's palette is fantastic. Palette. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's amazing. It's um, really, really soothing. I like it a lot. It's cool. I'm having a great time with it. And I'm finding that uh, I'm more interested in emotion, especially now that we're all at home. I'm much yeah. more interested in, in what, um, what these paintings evoke. Mm -hmm. And yeah, not really going towards that deep intensity, that deep brooding intensity that I've had in a lot of other my works. Yeah. But it's, it's still there to a certain extent, but in a lot of places, it's just there in far, far, far in the background. I see. So I imagine it's very, from your sculpting background, which I imagine is very controlled, right like you have to get it right right to Especially, something like this mm -hmm. which is like the total to me it feels like the total opposite there were some aspects that i that i incorporated in all my installations that were there i always had an element of the um uh uncontrollable I, i'd set up an installation and i would sprinkle uh plaster dust all over the floor before i would open the installation and to, oh. to allow tracking of the people's footsteps in their activity through the space and um or i would roll the floor with um ceramic slip to um to add another way to track it so they would pick it they would pick up the the slip and the, it'd scuff somewhere else so it'd become in a way uh inadvertent drawing oh so, cool so that in a way is, is how but that's with my with my installation work uh, I, i've always had an element of the I guess the unexpected, but I've put that in deliberately. I see. And let it ride. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so then it was sculpting and then it became painting. You became more of a yes. painter. Because when I met you, you were doing those um, wonderfully abstract horse style yes. painting equine series, which is amazing with the gold leaf. And that that's when I, when I met you. And then, um, Tell me a little bit about that. What led you into the equine stuff? Are you a horse person? I uh, I grew up around horses until okay. I, I was about nine. About we, but 
the time before then, I was really intensely around horses, but not in the way that people do. The, the people are out here. It was more of like out, out west. We had a horse in a, in a corral, and um, my dad told me to get on the horse. <laughs> I got on the yeah. horse. <laughs> and that was pretty much, you know, there wasn't a lot, of, a lot of training or instruction. But we were around these horses a lot. So my dad and my uncles would hunt on them. So we would huh? sneak them out and ride on them and such. And for, so for me, it was uh, really just in my formative years, riding on the back of a horse, especially with a horse running and that feeling of that, that speed and that activity, which for me, I'm a very active person. And I think that speed and that movement and power really, really spoke to me. Um, mm -hmm. And then fast forward I, to when I lived in, New, in uh, the city and I got to a point where I, due to my career, my other career, I wasn't able to make my artwork uh, the way I wanted to with my installation. So I pared it down and I, um, somebody asked me, someone, a gentleman in the Dominican Republic who was traveling asked me if I knew how to do horses and he really liked, he was interested in a piece, you know, of a horse. And I said, oh, of course I can draw horses. So I, um, started drawing these horses and one of my friends i was working at lancome she's like hey if you're interested in horses you should go to a, a polo game with me they're really really interesting so i went there and it was just like the power was incredible and the legs the legs and the pounding on the ground and um i did the drawing for the gentleman and i ended up having a show down in the dr a, a one person oh, show wow. of these large almost life-size horses that kind of was a nod to my installation work um and then that then I moved to Bedford a few years later, and that was my, you know, kind of sidestep out of the installation work into this uh, equine world. But I'm still doing the work for special events, like for, for charity and such, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and commissions. But this is my, you know, this is what I'm doing uh, when I'm in my studio and I don't have something like, I mean, this is my main work. Yeah. This is what's in my so heart right now. When I need to go to my studio, I do this. Yeah, because uh, what what interests me about is the inspiration, what inspires an artist. Mm -hmm. So, um, so when I met you, when I first saw you, it was the abstract equine series, and then it became this. You know, and I I, I was always you know I'm curious, and I'm, I'm you know some other people maybe too. It's like mm -hmm. what what was the light bulb? Was there a you know? I had a flood in my studio. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> there, at, there actually was a, an event. I had a flood in my studio a year ago. I think it was February. And um, when just before then, I had just done this equine piece. And I had gone to, for me, the ultimate level of realism. And I, got, and I was not so excited about that. I mean, it was beautiful. <laughs> But it was just, it wasn't where I wanted to be. But some, something in that, perfect, that perfectionist inside of me pushed, pushed to that point. And mm. I had a flood in the studio. I had to go through and take inventory of all my work. And I found these drawings of these um, structures in cities that I had been drawing years ago. And um, just life happened. And I didn't, fin I didn't go past the drawing stage of this series. And I'm like, oh, my God. I now is the time. So that's when I started doing uh, the red, the red pieces, those red, uh, those pieces that were basically just red on. Yes. The uh -huh. And I also, uh -huh. did, I, remember. I also did. Oh, there's the turn. There's the button. And I did these. Yeah. Okay. So those were um, the, the direct continuation of that series. Um, and that to me reminds me of a, of a, um, a shattered building. Yeah. Or yes. some kind of a, a green, it almost looks like a, a greenhouse glass shattered destruction. I mean, is that from the studio flood? Is that? That's, that's definitely what, um, that's the inspiration. And it also, okay. it also relates to things I've always been really interested in. Like, for example, I went to undergrad in Detroit. And we, we would go and watch buildings implode. <laughs> We'd watch them, you know, implode these buildings. That's so beautiful. Things. Yeah, and, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing to watch. Yeah. Ab absolutely. Absolutely beautiful. And um, growing up in Texas, there would be tornadoes. And, and I always found this beauty, this 
sorry, but this beauty in the aftermath of these, these buildings t taken apart and uh, a wooden piece just thrust in one direction and uh, a metal piece thrust in the other direction. I always found uh, inspiration in those gestures or marks. And same thing with, I don't know if you've ever driven up the uh, FDR and you go underneath the UN. Yeah. Look at the ceiling, all the scrapes on the ceiling. I don't, I have got to say, I've lived in, I've lived in New York for 30 years. I've never, I've never Next looked up. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to look my, up. It's one of my Next favorite. Time I'm down down down. It's, so it's, what's it's, on it's the ceiling? Like, it's what's it's on like the one ceiling? of my favorite natural drawings in the whole wide world. Interesting. Is it like peeling, cracking? What is it? It's soot. It's covered with soot and, okay. and things that drive through the tunnel that are too tall rub on it and they make marks. Oh, uh, okay. Got it. <laughs> and it's kind of in a way similar to how I make marks on these, like these, these long strokes. <laughs> yes. So, awesome. But it's not exactly intentional at all. So. Cool. Okay. So the studio floods. Yes. You start drawing these. You start drawing these, these white, kind of crashing uh, structure situation, yes. and then what happens? And, and then, then you slowly start to add. Then you start doing them in colors. Yes, you I start adding started colors. adding colors. I started to add red, um, and I'll and I'll um, here's one of these one of these pieces that has the red. There we go. Nice. There's one of the red ones. I see. And um, I um, I'd had a to be completely honest, I'd had a bad couple of weeks, and I was kind of angry when I just started the red ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, angry color, right? Yeah, but but what was funny about it is um, the one right before the red one was a huge white on linen one and that was and it was really expressive and um and i had that intense feeling and then i was like you know what i'm doing this in white which which works but i want to try it in red so i did and oh. and in these different you know it in these different shades of red there are other colors added in to mm -hmm. create you know more intensity or, or more or subtlety like for example in here course you add other colors to make the make the red um recede but um it i slowly just started to add other colors and now that and then here i am actually like to these pieces awesome does that make a little bit more sense yeah yeah no i'm yeah. just curious mm -hmm. about inspiration that that added the uh, that that yellow one is amazing the yellow and the um, and the pink one is very very pretty. Thank you. So then you just added. You, you were like, well, let me just get. I was angry, and then and then you just started adding more and more color. Just started adding more and more color, just as I started to get the flow going in my studio in a in a in a different way because it's such a transition to go from um, drawing something that is recognizable to drawing that to drawing on what's what's inside of you literally and um, mm. letting it, allowing that to happen and allowing yourself to be be in the mood and to be taken by it because if you don't allow that to happen then it, it the or at least for me the abstraction doesn't happen i have to be i have to be in that place and not um not controlling it as much as one would think and what do you is there anything that you do to prepare yourself you do to prepare yourself to be in that space music 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 music's a huge driver for me yep cool what's yeah. what's what music do you listen to i listen to i honestly i listen to everything from the misfits to cecilia bartoli to um radiohead um, nice <laughs> frank black i um yeah, I just kind of, it really, it really just depends on what it is, but I, I have a, I have a, as an adolescent, I was a little punker, so of course I love, I love my heavy, my heavy music. <laughs> nice, that's great, so, cool. And I listen to it when I'm doing certain, doing certain pieces, it just depends on my mood. And then sometimes so I'm blasting the opera arias. 
Out of, out of curiosity, what do the kids think of mommy's music choices? Do they know, like, when, when the music's blasting, do they know, like, stay away from mommy? She's like... No, well, now Stella's like, I like Danzig, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, that's cool. They love opera, too. <laughs> that's great. Awesome. Yeah. So you got... You, do you, I also like to ask artists this question is how disciplined, like I know with a mother of two young children, it's, it's hard to find the time, but are you disciplined? Like, do you put the kids to bed and go to the studio? Do you like, how do you make time to get in that headspace? Because I imagine it's a, it's kind of a wrangling. Right. Right now it is. Usually during normal life, I have a very regimented schedule. Um, and well, and the kids are actually at school. <laughs> I have a very regimented schedule, but right now I'm uh, working on my family and how they see my time in the studio as um, my time in the studio and the door's locked. So um, yeah. it's, it's been a process because the first few weeks it was me working whenever I could squeeze time in and staying up in the middle, you know, staying up super late. I even experimented with waking up at four o'clock in the morning. That was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> But but out of I just need, I need to do it. I need, I'm a happier person when I'm working in the studio. But now now I'm starting to get into a groove where I set them up with their homeschooling, and then I go into the studio. And once I get things rolling in my studio, then it's easier for me to kind of jump back and forth. Their playrooms on the same floor as my studio, so for for good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, keep an eye on them, right? Mm -hmm. But that's great. I mean, it's 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 really hard for mothers. I find especially to make the time to for themselves in general, even if it's like going to get like, you know, your hair did or something, yeah. you know, it's really hard for, for, so I imagine for an artist, it's gotta be even harder to set that boundary. That's like a nice healthy boundary for mommy time, you know? It, it is. Cause it's not like you're in a meeting. And, and right. It's not like you're uh, presenting to somebody. You're presenting to yourself. You're literally just going into your own head. You need that. You need that time to just go into your own head. But we honestly, we all need that. <laughs> yeah, but I, I imagine it's a great lesson for them too, as they get, you know, so that when they're older, they have the, you know, the wherewithal to say, no, this is my time. I'm, I'm I need to like just focus on me for a while. That's yes. Great. You know, good for yes. you. It's. It's good. I think that there's definitely some silver linings to this whole experience. <laughs> we, just to, we just have to hold on to them. <laughs> yes, that's right. So when so I heard um, I didn't watch him today, but Fomo said schools are closed. Yeah, for the rest I of the school that. year. I saw that a few minutes ago. Yep. So well, we're just gonna keep we're just gonna keep going, and they're gonna have to. We're gonna we're gonna get really good at this process because I'm, yeah. I, need, I need to make more of these bright paintings. <laughs> I can't wait to see more more. Can you just give us a, a quick scan of the of the studio walls? Yes. Let me turn this just around. How you work here? Because this is actually the really brilliant colors started with um, with these ones. Nice. It was like right at the beginning of the quarantine because like, these are. Those nice. there that I wouldn't have mm -hmm. normally. So let me see. I guess I need to stand back. Okay, here we go. Nice. Beautiful. Super cool. These are great. And, and you can see which ones were before, which ones were like before beginning of COVID, COVID and which ones were after. It's like you can see the brilliance at the end of that painting was more kind of going into COVID. Yeah, I see. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. That's like the whole gamut, right? Because you got your red. You're starting off yeah. with the red and then it's nice. There we go. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, keep going. Keep one more. Keep spinning oh, around. The... Oh, this is one. Oh, that's different. That's from 2006. I, that was one of the first things I gave my gave Javier, my husband. <laughs> oh, nice. I was cleaning things out the other day and I found it because it was in a, this tube of things that needed to be framed. So I have it slowly flattening out. It's cranes. 
Very nice. Thanks. And then there's those guys. Great. That's awesome. All right. It's already 3.30. So we have our, our half hour. I told you it would fly by. It did. It did. It was fun, right? Absolutely. Really fun. It's so great to see your face. You and I'm so glad we got to do this. And yes. I love your new work. It's amazing. Thank you so much. I'll keep you posted. I can't wait to see in person. Because I, right. I, the smell, you know, the smell of your studio too, right? Yes. Anyway. Yes. All right, darling. Well, take okay. care. Have a great you night. Too. Take care. Stay safe. Stay home. Thanks. Bye. Okay.